In this video, we're going to take a look at the integral test, which is just another test or another tool in your tool belt to help you uh, determine the convergence of an infinite series. Uh, all in total, there's um, eight or nine or ten of these tests that we're going through one at a time. Just a quick reminder of, of what converge and diverge mean. Um, if you have an infinite series, you're adding up terms uh, consecutively one after the other. Um, if that adds up to a finite number, then we say that it converges. And if there's no finite number that the sum adds up to, then we say that the series diverges. So um, anyway, here's the integral test. It says if you have a function f of x that's on a continuous domain, um, just like the normal graphs of lines and parabolas and uh, all the other graphs you've seen um, throughout your other math classes, if that's a continuous function that's positive, which means it's above the x-axis, it doesn't attain any negative values. It's continuous, which means it doesn't have any breaks or jumps or asymptotes or holes in it. And it's decreasing from 1 to infinity. And your continuous function matches the terms of your sequence that you're adding up to get your series at every integer value greater than 1. Um, then it, what the integral test says is that the uh, infinite series and the improper integral of f of x from 1 to infinity either converge together or they diverge together. Um, so the, the idea behind this is we're much more comfortable with integration because we've, we've done it for some time now uh, while these series are, are relatively new. So we, what we've done is we've created a link. We've created a, a bridge that says if we can show that this converges, then so does the series. If this diverges, then so does the, the series, um, as long as we've satisfied these criteria here. So let me give you just a quick idea of why it works, and then we'll do a couple of examples. All right, so um, I've got an example here of just a simple um, infinite series, sum of from 1 to infinity of 1 over n. Uh, I've done this graphically here. So if we thought about what this means, you would take uh, basically the height at 1, 1 over 1 is 1, um, plus, and then the height at 2, which would be a half, um, plus the height at 3, which would be a third, and so on and so forth, plus a fourth, plus a fifth, plus a sixth, etc., for, for forever. And uh, that seems very natural. We want to know, does this add up to a some finite number? That's, that's what we're curious about. But let's see here. If we create or overlay a continuous function over top of this, uh, I think the function we would get would be not 1 over n, but um, that looks like the graph of f of x equals 1 over x, right? Um, they obviously <clears throat> match at all the integer values. 1 over 1 is 1. Then you have a half and a third and a fourth. But it's continuous in the sense that uh, it's on defined on the whole real number line. So even at um, decimals and fractions between 1 and 2 and 3, uh, etc., is, is still defined. So we've, we've created a connection here between a sub n and f of n. And, and so going back to the definition of the integral test, we see that f of n uh, matches the terms in your sequence at, in, at certain integer values. Um, some other bonuses, notice that it's positive. It always stays above the x-axis. It's certainly continuous and it's decreasing. So the integral test is applicable for this example. Then if I'm, if I'm curious, if I'm curious to does this uh, infinite series converge? Well, I can actually answer a related question. I can look at something I might be more comfortable with. I can check out the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x dx. And here's, here's how these are linked. Uh, if you look at this notation for def, uh, somewhat of a, a definite integral from 1 to infinity, it's actually an improper integral. This refers to the area under the curve from 1 to infinity, where um, here the sum of 1 over n, well, ch check this out. Here's the connection. If we actually create um, what you might remember as like a Riemann sum or an approximation of this area, if you um, complete these guys into um, rectangles like so, well, then think about the area of each of these rectangles here. How about the first rectangle? Well, it would be width times height. It's one unit wide, so 
you don't have to even worry about multiplying by one and it's one unit tall for rectangle number two is one unit wide because they're in a distance of integer values apart times a half a unit tall and then the next one's a third uh, next one has a fourth um, uh, amount of area and then a fifth etc and so to get an approximation to the area under the curve you add them all and so really these two questions are, are one and the same um, because this would give you the exact area now um, somebody would say well Devin uh, that's not exactly correct because they're not going to be the same I understand that and they're, they're not going to be the same answers but it's at least enough to say either they'll be finite together um, because they're, they're certainly close as an approximation or they'll both be infinite but for instance if you had one being finite and the other being infinite well then no matter how large your finite number is it's always infinitely far away from infinity so uh, you, you wouldn't have that sense of closeness or approximation of being the same if one was allowed to stay finite and one wound up being infinity so uh, that handcuffs them together it links them together and so hopefully that little example shows that so for this one if we here if I just erase this here and we finish this out uh, I assume you know how to uh, finish improper integrals basically this infinity poses a little bit of a problem but other than that you work these the same way the integral of 1 over x would be the natural log of x and you put a bracket and you're not allowed to say from 1 to infinity that's a little bit of a no-no because of the fundamental theorem of calculus requiring that to be some uh, finite value so we use a little trick um, and obviously I didn't come up with this trick the trick is to use a dummy letter or dummy variable k or n or j or whatever and then treat that as some finite constant and then once you plug in k and plug in 1 and subtract then we'll take the limit of that as k pushes its way on out to infinity again um, so this one here we get uh, the natural log of k minus the natural log of 1 which is 0 and then if you take the limit of that I should have squeezed that in there the limit of that as k goes to infinity obviously natural log grows and grows and grows and we get infinity so the improper integral I was able to compute that um, just based off of old knowledge I got infinity and so that means that improper integral diverges and by applying the integral test since this guy diverged then I can say that the infinite series related to that one also diverges so it's a, a very nice little test in cir certain circumstances now can we use it for every inner um, every infinite series on earth N unfortunately no because not every one of these terms that uh, would be in an infinite series is integrable if you wrote it as a continuous function but for the ones that are like this uh, it's a very 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 good test uh, now that was kind of an easy one let's finish up with a, a more difficult one um, this would be more indicative of what you might see on a test or something uh, we'll jump right to it uh, my first inclination is that I think it converges because um, you see these terms are going to zero very rapidly because you have n to the fourth in the denominator but only an n in the numerator so I suspect this will probably converge but suspecting it will converge isn't good enough so what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll treat this as a sub n and then I'll write a related function f of x x over x to the fourth plus one and so it's the same function that would obviously agree with this one for all the integer values and I'll integrate that from 1 to infinity. Okay, and the reason I said this was a, just a little bit more difficult was just the integration that you're trying to do is a little bit more difficult. Um, I would hope that you would understand how to integrate this. Um, this one actually looks like a, an arctan integral um, where you have um, du over u squared plus 1. And the way to uh, achieve the u squared in the denominator is you could write this as x squared squared plus one and then it, uh, dx and so if your choice for u would be x squared to make it u squared plus one like the template for arctan needs to be then the du would be 2x dx well good news for us is I, I have 
an x and a dx, I just need a 2. So um, this is a common calculus trick. I, I assume you've probably seen this trick before. If you need a constant of a 2, we'll just put one in there, and on the outside we'll balance it with a 1 half. So it's a win-win situation. I haven't changed the integral uh, because really I could cancel those and be right back where I started, but I got the 2 that I needed. Okay. Now the 2, the x, and the dx come out, and um, so I'll still have a 1 half here and a 2x dx, and I can take all of those out and now convert everything in terms of u. We'd have 1 half integral 1 over u squared plus 1, and then the 2, the x, and the dx become du. Now, I'm not going to copy these limits over right this second because 1 to infinity was the limits for x, and these should be the limits for u. I could find them, but um, I actually don't need to to, to finish this, this answer here. Um, the integral of 1 over u squared plus 1, hopefully you realize that is an arctan integral. So we should write right here arctan of u with a bracket. But um, the last step of the problem is to go back and see what u actually was. u was x squared, so I'm going to write x squared instead. Okay. Now I'll write in my limits of integration, and now I can put 1 to infinity back in there because I'm, I've written it back in terms of uh, x. Now again, I'm going to have to use the same trick because it's an improper integral. So I'll say um, from 1 to k, and I'll take the limit as k approaches infinity there. Okay, You can pull a 1 half out, and I'm going to go forgo a little bit of this algebra here. Um, arctan of k squared as k goes to infinity. Uh, if you're familiar with the graph of arctan, or if you looked at this on a calculator, as k goes to infinity, this approaches pi over 2. So I'll plug in pi over 2 right here. And then minus arctan of 1. Well, tangent of pi over 4, that 45 degree angle is 1. So the arctan of 1 would go back to pi over 4. So 1 half pi minus 1 fourth pi is 1 fourth pi um, times a half would be pi over 8. Now what does this mean? This does not mean that your series adds up to pi over 8. That's, that's not what I'm saying. Uh, the only thing I'm interested in is the fact that this is finite. That's the big deal. Because remember, there was some error involved between the actual versus the approximation. Um, but what it is enough to tell me, since this is finite, that means that it converges, and since the improper integral converges, then that means that my infinite series also converges. So if I go back and erase some of this original stuff here, then I can say that this guy uh, converges, but that's not enough most likely for your instructor. They're also going to know what test you use. We can say that it converges by the integral test. You have to be able to quote what test it is that you're applying here.